Welcome to another episode of Drinking Reviews. I'm Marcus Blake. I'm Violet Ravati. All right, tonight we have a chance to see Birds of Prey. And uh, it's the Margot Robbie movie where she plays Harley Quinn and kind of brings everybody together, the Birds of Prey, hence the title. Um, as nerds, it was a very interesting movie. I think we're going to have some very unfiltered things to say about it. Uh, so we're going to jump right into talking about this movie. Um, I just wanted to start off by saying, this is how I describe this movie. If they did a remake of Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill movies and threw some DC characters in there, that's what this movie would be. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying I felt like yeah. it was Kill Bill, but with Margot Robbie as Harley It is wrought with a lot of the same vengeance and, and energy. Yeah, it just feels, feels that one. Right, yeah. exactly. I mean, it's it, it was, it's very Tarantino. Now, again, I'm not saying that's a bad thing because, <laughs> you know, we like Tarantino, but I just didn't feel like it was a DC comic book movie. Um, I'm not saying it's bad. It was fun. And obviously Margot Robbie is fabulous in this movie mm -hmm. but I just can't really get behind it it's like, and it's just like it's like a very dynamic female gang like kind right. of and they were fun I mean yeah, they did cast the movie uh, very very well I thought I but, feel like the character development like really right you have a lot of very emotional now I mean obviously because you're dressed as Harley Quinn you were very <laughs> excited to see this movie yeah. um, did you like it yeah I, I definitely felt very um motivated <laughs> very, like like I should take certain okay. things in my life more seriously like because they're they're just so raw with so much raw energy and <laughs> passion and ambition to to for justice for their own personal stories so like what you're have. saying is if you uh, had if, if you had your own revenge plot in your life you were seeking revenge you would that's a good template yeah I feel like they're good role models for that like Okay. <laughs> well, I, I come from a very diverse background, sure. speaking lately. Like, my parents are not, like, the most uh, notable, like, people. And so, right. like, sometimes I walk in the footsteps of the characters I see, and I'm like, huh, that makes sense that they would feel that right. way. And sometimes I'm like, I kind of feel that way, too, about certain things that have been wronged by, by my right. parents, right? And it's like, so then you feel this strong emotional currents for the characters, because you're like... I know well, what it feels I mean, like. I, and I get what you're saying on that. Uh, like I said, I mean, the, the characters are great. I think yeah. they, they cast uh, the movie very spunky, well. They're super spunky, super sassy. Right. Although I still don't know what Rosie Perez is doing in the movie. I mean, I feel like she's kind of out of place in this movie, even though she's the uh, spunky cop that, yeah. here's a little bit of a spoiler, has all these ridiculous 80s cop movie uh, catchphrases. And they even, and and they even make... a lot of retorts, yeah. Yeah. But... Compared to what DC has done with their comic book movies up to this point, and they've been hit or miss. We all understand that Warner Brothers hasn't done a very good job with the DC movies. Uh, and Suicide Squad was a convoluted mess. Um, but this one, I, I, I'm confused or whether you're trying to make an actual story or you just wanted to have Margot Robbie play Harley Quinn again. And just threw out some basic plot of revenge and be like, it's an action movie. Go do what you want to do. So, I mean, do you feel like there's an actual tight story here? Or do you feel like it's kind of as convoluted as uh, Suicide Squad? I guess it depends on what you're in the mood for. I mean, some of it is kind of predictable and cheesy at some points. But... Um you start to really um, kind of feel for their motives sure. and, and think about like who's my who's my real friends because in this kind of um, setting like it's like can't it's like can't trust no one like trust right. no one kind of thing. Right, somebody's gonna rat you out. Yeah, and... it's like one thing right after the next. So. Well, and, and you kind of see that Harley Quinn has a little bit of a conscience here and there. Yeah, but which it's... is really nice to see that. I, I did actually enjoy that. I think mm -hmm. they've developed her character a lot more. Of her not being so yeah. batshit crazy. Yeah, you have some no pun intended in a DC movie, <laughs> but she, because she does have kind of a conscience here and there, she floats back and forth in, in the comic, you know, book stories. She isn't completely evil like the Joker, but at the same time, it was. I just feel like, hey, here's a movie. Go out and have fun, and maybe that's all you can do with this movie. You can't have a very serious tone with Birds of Prey. Even though they've tried to do that before. Did you know that there was a series nearly 20 years ago on the CW 
called Birds of Prey. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. You're like that. I don't know. I When I see Birds of Prey, I think of it as like they're rechanneling their energies. Like like Harley Quinn's kind of like a phoenix after she's kind of oh. adjusting to her transitionary phase with her relationship are you, status. Are you, are you trying to throw X-Men references into a <laughs> talk about a DC movie? <laughs> I feel like it's sort of, sort of relatable, yeah. I mean, they're all kind of like fierce birds. Like... You right. might think they're fragile, but they're not, and then they no. kind of show themselves. Well, the Birds of Prey storyline, like is, fight or flight, but they're yeah. fighting. Or the Birds kind of, of Prey storyline is a great storyline mm-hmm. in the DC comics. I'm not taking away from that. I just think that it's not what we're used to if you're a comic book fan. Mm. And yeah, there's a part of me as a huge DC fan. Obviously, I'm wearing my Superman shirt. <laughs> that you you're getting really really too creative mm-hmm. with this uh, movie. <laughs> hey we got Rebecca here Rebecca's gonna talk <laughs> about this movie with us too yes we're, yeah, we're doing an unfiltered drinking review of <laughs> Birds of Prey I have not seen it yet I, I know review it. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're like Get away! I don't want any spoilers. I like I like how actresses we know just kind of sneak into film around here. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to convey the oh, knowledge. Oh, don't, don't lie, Rebecca. You saw a camera. I'm like, I should be in that shot. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you can't see it that well. That's the that's the way it works. That's right kind here. of a nice little surprise. <laughs> well, 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 well. Well, you're, well, well, you're, well, well. well, you're part of this episode now. You got, you get a credit. I know you like it or not. You're willing to give it your consent. Well, we'll talk in a minute. We won't completely spoil the movie. Um. Anyway, <laughs> I know I got to reclaim my train of thought here. I almost, I almost feel like that they're just, they're not, they don't want to stick to the source material. They don't want these type source material type stories like what Marvel did with all of their movies mm-hmm. where it's let's just be creative and artistic and that? all that it doesn't really matter or maybe it doesn't like seem like the Huntress like, yeah she's kind of well and of... she's a great character that's not that's not what I'm saying um, all I'm simply saying is I feel like they got really too creative with this movie outside of the what we're used to in the comics and it just feels very weird and different if you are a huge comic book DC fan and love the source material. What would you rather have seen? Well, me personally, um, I mean, I like the story of how they kind of all come together, but I don't think you need some revenge plot, kids stealing the diamond, and Eat. some homoerotic <laughs> uh, thing between the mob boss and his lieutenant, which it was funny, but... I almost feel like that you kind of have to, if, if there's a movie that requires a dark tone, you know, uh, the same kind of tone that you had in Batman versus Superman, it would be this kind of movie, mm-hmm. you know. And for everybody that complained about Batman versus Superman having too much of a dark tone, um, this movie would have been perfect for it. But that's just me. So, and I could be completely way off base. But you liked it. You you enjoyed this movie. Yes. Okay. What was your favorite part about this movie? Uh, my favorite part. That's pretty hard to say. I guess it could be. Um, I like. I don't know all the quirks to it. Like Harley Quinn is a very, uh, a very intense person, and I and I feel like I'm a pretty intense person. So oh. when I when I when I see how she is with some people, like I'm like I, I feel like. <laughs> strong sense of sympathy for her because she's kind of like are, my... are you telling me now that yeah. Harley Quinn is your role model? Should I like s- scoot over <laughs> just a little bit? I don't know. Me and, me and Harley Quinn share, share some similar <laughs> similar grounds. So. <laughs> Alright. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, okay. I mean... But I'm not a terrible person. She's, no, no, no. She's like, I'm, I'm a terrible person. Now I'm not going to be a terrible person because of, <laughs> because of that kid. But like, she's just a very... Um, Flying at the seat of her pants. Right. Her superpower is kind of luck, like yeah. kind of ridiculous person, but with a sense of style throughout the whole entire chaotic right. mess. Like somehow she manages to still look good, even though she's doing these crazy ridiculous <laughs> things, and her makeup is flawless all the Right. How right. is that? <laughs> it's like seriously. Because she's Harley Quinn. Quinn. Because she's Harley Quinn, and she's just. Well, you know. <laughs> Maybe when you make a Harley Quinn movie, you don't really need a strong plot uh, or anything. You just need 
You know, you know what it really strong is. Strong characters, strong right? Characters strong feel. characters. Very strong female characters. It, it, it's like a Chinese uh, martial arts movie where the plot doesn't really matter as long as you have great fight scenes. They and all look really good. Yeah, they did. They look. Well, the police when the uh, the police station <laughs> scenes were actually fantastic. I was I, very <laughs> impressed with their ability to kick butt in super tight pants that are super shiny and super intense, and their their life graceful physique. Right. Their, their flawless. Kick, kick, like roundhouse kicks, like a series well, of roundhouse kicks followed by ridiculous. What where, where are those moves called? Great moves. I mean, I, I, I feel like it, it inspires me to take a self defense <laughs> class after watching that. I mean, aerial slopes is not enough. I want to, like, be able to kick butt with, like, just turning my head, you know, to, like, protect myself, like, anywhere. Because, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of relevant to any, anywhere, really, right? Right. Having having good skills like that, but but that one huntress though she's been doing it since she was a kid. It's hard to catch up to someone like that who's been doing it their True. whole life. Well, uh, Mary Winston, I mean she uh, she was really she was uh, great as the huntress. I, I really definitely enjoyed her. All right, let's talk about villains. Um, I thought this was kind of an interesting movie for Ewan McGregor to do, Mister Obi Wan Kenobi himself. Um, he, but I thought he played a very I don't know the right word. Uh, intriguing villain. He was funny. I laughed. You know, you wanted him to die, obviously. And again, you have this very homoerotic thing between him and his lieutenant, and of course, he's afraid of germs. But I think he made it work. You know, he was funny and charming and lovable in his own way. Ridiculous. Yeah. With his with his home and how he was just with the shrunken heads. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> This is just ridiculing the heads that have been around for thousands of years. Right. And really weird, <laughs> yeah. really weird taste Very in art. Man. I know. I, um, yeah, like I said, I mean, the villains work in their own way, but um, again, this entire movie is just one big revenge plot. That's all it is. With a lot of fun action. Yeah. yeah. But here's the bigger question. For all of our complaints of the Suicide Squad movie, do you feel like Birds of Prey is a better movie than Suicide Squad? I do. I actually yeah. enjoyed this more than I did Suicide I Squad. And I think, for me, I was so pissed off about how bad Suicide Squad and how good it could have been. Losing all that potential, Once they yeah. fucked it up. Yeah. And this one doesn't really matter about the plot, what they're doing. You're just bringing badass women together and they're going to kick everybody's butts. They with were pretty great badass. Stuff. Yeah. So, really, at the end of the day, this is just a fun movie with Margot Robbie playing Harley Quinn with a bunch of other characters. Although, like I said, yeah. Mary Winston was great as the Huntress. So, but you feel like this is better than Suicide Squad, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. I agree. <laughs> I totally agree. All right. We're going to round out this review. Um, I got to ask you. What would your final grade be on it? One through ten. What would you say this movie is? Um, I guess I would give it like a, maybe an eight. Really? Or You're going that seven, high? A seven? <laughs> seven or eight? I well, no, know. no. You stick to your guns I, on that. I mean, I like. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I wasn't bored a single moment throughout it. Um, and I was able to <laughs> okay. follow along very well. And, and I don't know. I just really like connected with a lot of the characters. All right. So to me, that's important in, in my movie. Well... Kind of critique. All right, we're but, gonna have a good, nice medium here. Yeah. I'm only gonna give it a six for this simple reason: you didn't have a good, tight story to it. And again, I feel like this is Kill Bill with DC characters. But I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna tear this movie apart like I did the Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie, which I think is horrible and never should have been made. And that's a whole different conversation. Yeah. I feel <laughs> like this movie is fun enough that fans of Harley Quinn can enjoy it for what it is. It's a great, fun action movie, and I would definitely watch it again. I, I like I said, I, I, I treat it again. Yeah, I definitely treat <laughs> it like a Chinese martial arts action movie where the plot doesn't matter as long as the fight scenes are good. So the fight scenes were pretty, pretty right. profound. Like. And Margot, in fact, I'm going to say this: so I get it, so Joaquin I Phoenix should not win an Oscar for playing the Joker, but Margot Robbie should win an Oscar for playing Harley Quinn. Because <laughs> at least this movie knows what it is. It's only a six. So between our two grades, it would average out to a seven, which is an okay movie. And I would go ahead and say that, you know what, you want a fun movie, matinee, 
you know, on the weekend or whatever. Playful. Yeah, go see this movie. It wouldn't be a complete waste of time. So, <laughs> ah, she's got to put the mask on. Check that out. Yes, I, I want to thank Violet uh, over here for actually dressing up for this press screening. Thank you. I, I thought this was great. I love yeah. to dress up. I love to cosplay. Well, I thought things. I looked great in my Superman t-shirt, you know, my kind of Superman look with, you know, sort of rippling muscles. But here she is outshining <laughs> me for this video. <laughs> All right. I want to thank Trinity Hall for uh, having us to do this uh, another uh, uh, this drinking review. Uh, that's where we're at, Trinity Hall Irish Pub and uh, Mockingbird Station in Dallas, Texas. Uh, for me, I am having, uh, my beer is the uh, Mardi Gras Bach by Abita. And mine is the Magner's uh, Hard Cider. All right. Always a good, popular beer here at an Irish pub. So, uh, but there you have it. Between, I give it a six, you give it an eight. Our average grade is a seven for this movie. And you'll get to catch uh, Violet's full review of this movie uh, later this week. So, thanks for uh, tuning in. And until uh, the next movie that we see, stay nerdy.